Hi, my name is Arman, and today we're going to talk about the trade-off between a centralized IT function that provides a lot of common services versus a more federated IT in terms of letting application developers have more flexibility around tools and technologies, and how that impacts us as a large organization as we're transitioning to adopting DevOps. When we talk about central IT, an analogy I like to use is thinking about it kind of like a tree. Right? And what I mean by that is at the sort of base layer, we'll have sort of a shared technology trunk. Right? And the trunk will be responsible for providing different IT services that are common across the entire organization. So examples of this tend to be things like our single sign-on. Right? Everyone might log into the company with the same sort of active directory system providing the credentials. Right? So that's an example of something that might be provided through the common trunk. On top of that, we're going to have a series of branches. And oftentimes, these branches will align to maybe a business group, maybe a line of business, maybe just a very large application that has its own way of doing things. And you can think about the branches as providing kind of a key difference from the trunk, but still providing a set of common services that we share across many applications. These applications then ultimately end up being the leaf nodes. Right? So what's available to the leaf nodes as a shared service is either provided through a branch, which is maybe differentiated from other branches and differentiated from the trunk, or it's provided from the trunk, which is providing a common set of services across an entire organization. Right? So as we think about this analogy, you can kind of see two very different types of organizations. Right? On one extreme, you'll get a very thin trunk right, with minimal branching. And effectively, the leaves are located directly on top of this very small trunk. Right? So the example of this would be if I have a central IT group that provides not much beyond maybe shared login and the ability to provide VM infrastructure. Right? So a very limited set of shared capability. And what this means is a lot of the kind of higher level functionality, higher level sort of problems need to get solved at the leaf layer. Right? The other sort of extreme of this is if I have a very thick trunk right, that provides a high level of standardization with minimal branching and puts the leaves on top. And so the difference would be in this kind of an organization, the central trunk is providing a lot of common services. Right? It might be everything from how do we provision our infrastructure, security concerns like secrets management, single sign-on. It might be things like uh, traffic routing and management. It might be things like a common way of deploying our applications, logging, monitoring metrics, et cetera. Right? And so you have these sort of trade-offs between a relatively thin central IT that allows flexibility at the leaf layer. Right? In this sort of a world, our applications have a lot of flexibility, as many degrees of freedom in terms of hey, maybe I want a different logging solution, or I want to use Kubernetes instead of Pivotal Cloud Foundry or instead of some other service. Right? So here, what you end up seeing is effectively what we're trading is a lot of flexibility. Right? So we're going to get more flexibility in terms of what our developers want to use. Right? The leaf nodes represent the end applications, the developers. So they're going to gain that sort of day one flexibility. Hey, I can use Kubernetes or PCF or Lambda or, or whatever I want. But the challenge is there's a lot of reinvention, right? So you have to kind of reinvent the wheel over and over, right? Because the share trunk isn't providing it as a service, right? Versus over here, you get a different set of concerns, right? So in this model, what I'm going to lose very explicitly is flexibility, right? What we're doing is saying I want a standardized platform that provides these capabilities. So by definition, I can't go and say I'm going to use a different way of deploying or a different log management tooling. Right? But what that gains is a lot of reuse. Right? I don't have to re-implement logging. I don't have to re-implement monitoring. I don't have to re-implement the way my app deploys times every single application. Right? So I think from the developer's perspective, there is this trade-off. Right? Here I have choice, but there's a lot of work I have to do times every single application. Here I have less choice, but I don't have a lot of work to do. It's kind of prescribed by the platform in terms of how we want to solve this. Right? If we think about it from sort of a higher level business perspective then of what's the trade-off, one of the other challenges we end up into is 
as we think about governance and control, right? Over here, let's say I want to implement some new GDPR rule, right? I want to say I need to think about my data protection in a different way, or we need to encrypt all the user's data, things like that. Well, the problem is I have flexibility, which means inevitably many different choices were made in terms of database technology, in terms of deployment architecture, in terms of the way an application is run. And so the challenge becomes I have to think about that control times many different environments. So this becomes sort of an operational challenge, right? We get a lot of operational complexity in this world where over in the other side of it, it's sort of a different trade-off, right? Which is now because everything is standardized on one common core, it's much simpler operationally if I add one new control, right? Because there's really a, a common standard, right? So over here, it's just a lot more operationally simple, right? So this is what we end up seeing is you know, these extremes, I think, end up being illustrative and are useful to talk about the trade-offs. But in practice, most organizations look like something in the middle, right? On one extreme, you know, you have a lot of flexibility, limited standardization, which makes controls hard. On the other side, you have very limited flexibility, but you have a high level of reuse and it's operationally simpler. The practical reality is most organizations are somewhere in the middle, right? And I think what we like to talk about is being conscious and being aware about that choice we make in terms of what should live inside of this common trunk, because that's really the leverage that we're providing all of our developers. Right? If I solve logging as part of common trunk, well, now for every single application, they don't have to re-implement logging. Right? So I want to be conscious about what are the things that are going to be low value for all of my developers to have to reinvent versus the things that are going to be high value if we're reusing. At the same time, we want to acknowledge that you know what, these different business groups might have different requirements, right? So if I have one group that, let's say all they deliver is user-facing <clears throat> microservices, this might be a really good branch to say, you know what, you use Kubernetes to deliver your applications because it's better suited for that type of workload. Versus maybe a back office team that is more heavily focused on you know, data processing, big data analytics, they're doing batch reporting. Kubernetes might not be a sensible platform for them. Here they might standardize and say, you know what, we're going to use Spark um, or sort of a Hadoop data platform as our core, and all of our leaves are going to run on top of that common platform. Where over here we said it's Kubernetes, right? And maybe you have a third group that PCF makes the most sense. So I think the goal here is to really think about and make those trade-offs around where do we want flexibility, right? Where do we want a degree of freedom? That degree of freedom might make sense if we have a ton of applications that have a shared pattern, a shared architecture, right? Versus when we talk about things like provisioning workflow or the way we do network connectivity or the way we do logging, right? There's not a lot of value in solving that five different ways, right? If you have a logging solution that can work across all of it or a central way of doing provisioning or security or uh, actual application deployment patterns, then those make sense to try and move into a centralized trunk. Right? So I think the goal as we think about this sort of centralization versus federation is being conscious of what trade-offs are we making. Right? And I think as long as we're sort of making those conscious choices of, yes, in our end state, we want to give business units flexibility around runtime platform, but not provisioning security connectivity, I think it's useful to think about it in the, through the lens of the sort of branch and trunk analogy. So when we talk about the branch and leaf sort of analogy, uh, as we talk about sort of thinking about DevOps, trying to adopt DevOps, a common question then becomes, you know, okay, but how do I switch from my existing organization, which already delivers in sort of an ITIL model, um, where we're sort of filing in tickets and waiting between organizations to sort of a more DevOps model, which is self-service and more sort of developer-oriented. And so how does that kind of map back to kind of this analogy? Right? So the way we like to think about it is, if you think about this as one tree, and a large organization looks like a forest. Right? There's not necessarily a single tree in terms of how delivery is done. So today you might look at it and say, you know what, I have an existing sort of setup in terms of my ITIL process that already looks like you know, a large tree. Right? We have a common trunk that maybe delivers you know, Active Directory for security and delivers mm -hmm. VMware on-premise in terms of the infrastructure that we're running uh, of VMs. And then I have a branch that is, uh, you know, let's just say Pivotal Cloud Foundry in terms of my application deployment. And I have applications running on top of that already. Right? 
So I have an existing infrastructure in place. Now the challenge is over here, we have an ITIL model running, right? And so when we talk about ITIL, the sort of classic challenge is what we've done is organize our people sort of differently. We've organized around a series of technology silos. So let's say I have my VMware team that's responsible for provisioning VMs. I have my F5 team that updates my load balancers and my Palo Alto team that manages the firewalls. My experience as an end user, a developer, is I file a ticket against the VMware team and some number of weeks later I get a VM, right? And then following from that, I file a ticket against F5, wait some number of weeks, and then the load balancer gets updated. And then from there, I file a ticket against my firewall team, wait some number of weeks, and my load balancer comes out, right? And so this sort of end time, this is sort of the time to value for a customer, right? Because at any point in the middle of this, it wasn't useful to me. If I had a VM that didn't get traffic and there was no firewall ports open, it's not that helpful, right? It's only once I have the infrastructure running, traffic can get to it, all the firewall rules are open, great, there's now real value, I can deploy my application and it can do things, right? So in this model, what we did is have a series of teams organized around technology and the sort of front door, the interface to working with the team was you file a ticket. You file a ticket against you know, the, the VMware team and then they manually create a VM and then you go from there, right? So the challenge becomes as we talk about adopting a DevOps model, this existing tree is there already, right? It's already working, there's already applications and you can't really change it in flight, right? We have too many sort of business critical needs to just say we're gonna take a pause for a few years uh, and just redo everything. So instead you almost think about it as you're planting a little sapling alongside. So really the common pattern becomes how do I bootstrap a new tree, if you will, alongside, which is sort of DevOps native, right? And the goal becomes define that common trunk. And usually at this stage, what we're talking about is onboarding the first app, maybe the first five apps. So we don't need to distinguish and create branches yet, right? Because we're really only onboarding the first few applications in the, the new model, but most likely also operating as kind of cloud infrastructure. So how do we plant a new little tree that is operating in sort of a different model, right? And what it, part of what it comes down to is it's a different process, it's a different sort of a structure in terms of how we deliver, right? So we leave our existing ITIL tree, let it function, you want business continuity, things have to continue to work. But then as we define this new one, what do we put in this common trunk? And what we often see is there's sort of the four key layers we talk about, which is how does an application provision? And oftentimes for us, this is using Terraform as the tool. There's a question around how do we provide security of not only application infrastructure, but data as well, as well as the infrastructure. And so Vault tends to be used here. There's a common network connectivity challenge, right? So how do we connect all the pieces together, right? And this includes things like our API gateways, our load balancers, our firewalls. We need some registry that knows what's running where, and then use that in an API-driven way so these other pieces can interface. This is console. And then at the topmost layer is the actual runtime that we end up using, right? And this might depend on what our organization's comfortable with. We have a product Nomad. It's common uh, for customers to use Kubernetes here as well. Uh, if you're big data oriented, you might use a system like Spark instead, right? But these are the pieces that we end up seeing as being common, right? Particularly these three tend to sit in the trunk as a shared service versus the runtime ends up being one of the key branches, right? One group will use Spark, one will use PCF, one will use Kubernetes, one will use Nomad, right? And so what we wanna do is sort of plant this new trunk, right? Allow a team to bootstrap using a different set of technologies, but more importantly, a different process, right? You're not bringing ITIL with you. The goal becomes for these applications onboarding, that they have a totally self-service experience, right? And so what that becomes is we need to define this reference stack of tr or trunk uh, that we're using to expose this capability, but doing it in an API-driven way. So when the developer comes in, they're not filing a ticket against the Terraform team. They're taking their own module and saying, great, this is a web application that runs on Kubernetes. There's a pre-approved module, and I can self-service the provisioning and deployment of that, right? And the way I will interact with my network is in an API-driven way. When the application gets deployed, it gets automatically registered as part of the, the registry, and that drives the downstream network automation in terms of 
firewalls and load balancers and API gateways, right? We're not filing a ticket against the API gateway to add a new backend instance. So this is just as much about this process shift as it is about the technology shift, right? So this is how we like to talk about it is when we think about the sort of trunk and branch, keep your existing tree, right? This is business as usual. Identify the five new applications or maybe the one application that's going to migrate to DevOps, that's going to migrate to cloud. Define the trunk in terms of how we want to operate in this new environment and then onboard that one application. But the existing infrastructure, the existing IT, it's still business as usual, going to continue to function. And what you find over time is that it becomes sort of a strategy around stop onboarding new applications here. All of our net new applications land here. And so this sort of sapling grows and becomes its own tree. right? So over time, we'll scale this up. right? We'll have a larger trunk as we onboard more applications and services. We might hit a tipping point where we say, great, when we got to the 50th app, there was a reason to branch. right? And we have a Kubernetes branch, and we have a Spark branch. right? And then our applications are running on top of this. And over time, what we're basically doing is as we write new greenfield apps or as we modernize our applications, or over time, some of these services might just be getting deprecated. They're no longer relevant. This tree will start to grow as we move things over into the new model. And this tree will start to shrink sort of naturally, right? Sort of a contain and drain strategy off of this, right? And so this is what Gartner likes to refer to as a bimodal infrastructure, meaning we're operating in sort of these two modes simultaneously. Some apps are operating and delivering in an ITIL fashion. Some apps are operating and delivering in a DevOps fashion. And I think this becomes a realistic transition versus saying, you know, an existing business that's in flight, we're simply going to turn it off and tomorrow turn on as DevOps, right? It doesn't really work, right? Versus a much more gradual transition where we say net new, we bleed over, existing stuff continues to run business as usual, right? So I think this is a useful way to think about this transition from ITIL over to DevOps. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out HashiCorp.com. We have a lot more resources on topics related to this, as well as DevOps and the tools in general. Uh, and if you're thinking about your managed services strategy and how this might apply to you, please reach out and partner with us as you go through that conversation.